Hey guys, Darcy here today, and we're going to talk about gain staging in Luna. That's using tape saturation on the tracks, summing on the buses, and tape again on the master, and how the VU meters that they display on the tracks will help you significantly. Let's go. All right, guys, I'm really excited about this one. Gain staging is a very important, crucial beginning step to any song any mix and even if you're just producing for yourself you're not really mixing it's super important to get your gain staging right and the thing that i love about luna is its vu meters on the actual mixing like console with inside luna that just makes the workflow a lot easier a lot quicker for me so let's listen to this sample this loop off of splice real quick and we're going to use it for building our gain staging from the track through to the master and just how we want to set things up okay so let's first listen to this and get a sense of what we're working with all right so imagine this is a track that i'm mixing this is what's pull up for me okay so the first thing you always want to think about is your clip gain okay but the thing I like is that Luna has tape saturation on the tracks, which will give it a flavor and a sound, but has a view meter. So to add tape, whether we're in this view in the left where we can see this input drawer, or I do command plus slash equals and bring up this view, we can see we have a tape option. So let's click this, and this is drum, so I like oxide tape. So I'm going to click on that one. Now, I'm going to go back to the other view because I need the clip gain. And watch what happens. We're going to play this and we're going to see how hard is it hitting the tape saturation. And then we're going to work with our clip gain to adjust um, the how much we're putting in to the tape. So let's go. Okay, so it's riding it all the way on the very top, that plus three. Now I'm going to try to aim for this to be at zero, okay? So let's do that. Okay, now I can mess with the saturation. I'll do that quickly just so you can get a sense of the flavor. And obviously, as we're moving that saturation up and down, it's also inputting the input volume in the tape higher or lower. So that will also affect how much we want to do this. If we want to really push this, then we're going to have to move our automation down some more, which will obviously affect the flavor of the sound. So if I were to do this real quick. You can tell either we're getting that overly done sound or lesser of it. Regardless, you're getting the idea where we're trying to watch our game. I'm just going to do Command Z and a couple things here. I'm going to put that back to zero. Yeah, so zero. Okay. So now we have this set up. Now uh, we can also check our actual volume that's outputting from the track down here at the bottom. All right. So this is going to get important in here in a second. So we're not clipping is all I wanted to see. So now we're going to put a bus on this, okay? So if I hold Command Shift and hit B on any tracks that are selected, I can create a bus and they'll automatically route to it. So I'm gonna call this one Drums and we're gonna leave Neve Summing on. So we create that and now we're going to see how much gain we're putting through the Neve Summing on the bus. So we're getting a little plus three. Again, I'm going to just try to aim for zero with all of this as an example just to demonstrate. Um, but now I'm going to ride how much volume from the track itself. Okay, so we're hitting about zero. Now we have an option here to flip the impedance from high to low, which is also going to affect the gain. And so I can also use an internal trim, so um, which we can do that. But I also want to make sure why I started with the actual volume coming out of the track here at the bottom is I just don't want to assume, you know, trimming is going to be good. I want to make sure all my volumes going in are 
appropriate before I even mess with the settings with inside the Neve Summing. Okay, so now that's coming out, and now we want to put something on the master. So here's our main out, our submix, and we're going to put the ATR102 on that. And I'm just going to choose a uh, preset. So we're just going to go up here, type master. Oops, I unclicked it. If I can type master. And I cannot type master. People are watching. You cannot type. So now we're going to click the 468, clean type 468. All right, I put that preset on. So let's take a listen. All right, so we're, we're, we're gaining pretty good. But like I will now mess with the volume of the drums just to see what will happen. Now, obviously, that's good. It sounds nice, but we're getting pretty hot on the drums out, and I don't want that to clip. So I'm going to Command Z that, and we can bring up the options here, and we can also change how much input we're sending in. So I'm going to make sure that's not linked so it doesn't bring down the, the output. And so we're going to hit play. All right, so you get the idea here, right? You use the clip gain on the actual track itself to uh, to set the volume going through the tape. And then we use the actual gain coming out of the track to worry about how much we're putting into the summing. And then we can also look at our master and make decisions there as well. And we also have the ability to affect, for instance, with this one, how much input and output we have on the actual end tape. And we get... You know, not only that, we're getting the sound and the coloration of what each one of these things does, um, but we're also able to just use them from a visual perspective for our benefit. So, yeah, hopefully you found this helpful. This is just kind of giving you that overview that hopefully gets you off onto the races. Let me know what else you would find helpful and put that in the comments, and I'll make sure to jump on that for you. Have a good one. Yeah.